Most ERP reporting and BI implementations aren't as good as they could be. They're bloated with line items, ignored by leadership, and rarely tied to the operational questions that matter. The problem isn't the data, the problem is how it's presented and acted on. In this video, we'll show you how to build ERP reports that drive decisions, not just updates. But before we dive in, this video is sponsored by several ERP leaders, including our title sponsor, Delmia Works, as well as Epicor, QT9, Genius ERP, and Sweetmaster ERP. What a stellar group of platforms. You can learn more about each of them through the links in the description and stick around to the end for more resources. All right, let's get into it. Here are five tips for making better, more data-driven decisions with ERP analytics and reporting. Tip number one, build dashboards around decisions, not data dumps. Most companies start by asking, what metrics do we have? Instead, start with what business decisions do we need to make? For finance, are we hitting gross margin targets by product line? Which suppliers are creating the most cost variance? Do we have enough cash flow to support expansion? For operations, where are orders getting delayed? Are we meeting production efficiency benchmarks? Which plants or warehouses are underperforming? When you frame reports around questions, you avoid drowning in irrelevant charts. Instead, you get dashboards like production health with yield percent, scrap rates, and downtime, or financial pulse, margin by SKU, AR aging, and budget variance. Dashboards built this way actually get used because they answer questions that leaders are asking in every ops meeting. Tip number two, flag exceptions, not average. The real power of ERP reporting is spotting what's breaking or about to break. Averages hide the truth. Exceptions drive action. For example, instead of showing average supplier lead time, highlight instead any supplier over 20% variance in the last 30 days, work orders delayed more than 48 hours past due, and inventory items below safety stock thresholds. Then, tie those exceptions to alerts and workflows. Auto-notify procurement if supplier misses SLA twice in a row. Trigger escalation if a production batch is delayed beyond tolerance. Assign a planner if a SKU drops below reorder point. That's how ERP analytics move from reporting to real-time risk management. Tip number three, segment performance by product, region, and customer. ERP systems often store mountains of transactional data. The value comes when you break it down by meaningful segments. For example, product line, margin contributions per SKU, not just total revenue, region, on-time delivery by plant or warehouse, customer, profitability by account, factoring in rebates, returns, and service costs. This lets you see insights like region A has lower revenue, but two times higher margins than region B, or customer X is unprofitable when warranty claims are factored in. That's actionable. That tells you where to invest, cut, or renegotiate. Before we move on, a quick shout out to our title sponsor, Delmia Works. If you're a repetitive or batch process manufacturer, whether you're make to stock or make to order, Delmia Works is designed with you in mind. They're an end-to-end -end ERP built specifically for SMBs and mid-market manufacturers who need help managing repetitive operations on the shop floor and full operational visibility without bolting together a dozen different systems. And here's the kicker. Delmia Works believes in choice. You can deploy on-premise or in the cloud, choose perpetual or subscription licensing, and work with either their direct teams or a robust partner network across North America and worldwide. Thanks to Delmia Works for supporting this series. Check them out through the link in the description to see if it's the right fit for your business. Now, back to the tactics. Tip number four, link operational data to financial outcomes. One of the biggest ERP blind spots is when operations and finance report in silos. The real value comes when you connect activity to dollars. For example, link machine downtime to lost production hours, to lost revenue, the overtime hours, to cost overages, to margin erosion. Connect supplier delays to late shipments, to customer churn. When operational KPIs roll all the way up into the PL impact, managers finally have the context to prioritize. It's the difference between machine 12 was down for three hours and machine 12 downtime cost us $120,000 lost last quarter. Tip number five, add data quality and governance metrics. ERP data gets messy fast. Incomplete bills of material, duplicate vendors, outdated cost lists. If you don't measure it, it won't improve. Create a data quality dashboard that includes 
percent of open POs without delivery dates, percent of BOMs missing cost rollups, duplicate or inactive vendor records, transactions without approvals logged, set thresholds, assign owners, and review monthly. When leaders see 20% of BOMs incomplete, they suddenly understand why margin reporting is unreliable. Clean data isn't just IT's job, it's everyone's job. There you have it, five tips for making data-driven decisions with ERP analytics and reporting. Done right, your ERP should become a decision engine, not just a record-keeping system. One more big thank you to the sponsors who made this series possible, including our title sponsor, Delmia Works, as well as Epicor, QT9, Genius ERP, and Sweetmaster ERP. Each of these brings unique value depending on your industry and use case, and we've included links in the description. All right, folks, that's it, that's all. See you next time. Cheers.